Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course. And this is on the human component of professionalism. This comes from our CompTIA A plus essential requirements, the 220 701, section 6.2, where we need to talk about being more professional in the workplace, culturally sensitive, on time, avoiding distractions, and much more. We'll go through all of this in this module. Is the glass half full or half empty? It's that universal saying that talks about how you look at life. How, what is your perspective? What is your attitude towards these things? And when you're dealing with customers and talking to them and trying to solve their problems, there can be a bit of a challenge in maintaining that positive attitude. So you want to do things like having a positive tone of voice. Make sure when you're communicating with the customer that you're able to let them know that things are going to be great. We know exactly how to fix these kinds of problems. We'll be able to solve your issue. You want to partner with the customer in that way too. How can we make sure that you're successful, Mr. Customer? What can I do to make sure this is going to be solved right for you? What are your timeframes on being able to do this? Let me make sure that we've got the right attitude going into this, that everything is going to be fixed. One also thing to think about is the problem itself may not be fixed. We may have to fix the situation. We want to let somebody know that we've looked at the hard drive. It's failed. There's no backups. Everything on this drive is now lost. What are our options? So we, even in situations where you're not able to recover data or there's no recovery from this bad piece of hardware, you need to have some options. Look, I can send this out to a service and they'll repair it for a certain amount of money or we'll try to. It'll cost a few thousand dollars. I can get you a new drive right now. We can put it in. I have some tapes from last month that might be updated with this data. Give some options and maybe some ways that you can help them through that particular problem. Your attitude is going to have a direct impact on the entire experience. From the moment you start talking to somebody, it really sets a tone for how everything is going to go. So you want to be sure that the entire time you're communicating with somebody that you've got the best possible attitude. And what you'll find is that positive attitude comes back to you as well. This one seems kind of obvious, but it makes sense that if you're working with other people, time is very important. You want to be sure that you're very punctual and on time. There may be cases where you're working on other problems that cause you to be late. You should always apologize. This is your you should always be worried about somebody else's time and making sure that you're not wasting their time. So if any any situation happens where you're running behind, make sure they know that you're delayed prior to the actual start time. And when you finally do start things up or finally get back with them, always apologize for that unintended distraction. You want to have an environment for conversation as well. You want to make this as casual as possible. It's surprising how often a help desk environment is completely shut off by their users. You want to have people able to walk up to you and have a conversation with you. Uh, one of my secrets is to always have candy around. Everybody loves chocolates or candy or some type of, of, of goody that's sitting out front. And if you have it sitting on your desk, people are more apt to come by and talk to you. And it's also a good way somebody can sit down, have a piece of candy. You can communicate about what your problem is. And that way you know that they're in an environment that's very relaxing to them, something that they can use to help talk with you. On the phone, make sure, since you don't have candy, make sure at least the phone conversation is as professional as possible. Don't have any distractions in the background. It's surprising how many business calls I'm on where there's a barking dog in the background because somebody's working at home. There's somebody walking through a mall and you hear all the noises. You want to have a quiet background and a clear audio. Sometimes having a headset on is not the best possible situation, especially on a conference call where there are a lot of people. Make sure that you pick up the handset and talk into it. It makes a dramatic difference on how well people are able to hear you and therefore able to understand what you're telling them. In our line of work, unfortunately, sometimes we're put in some very difficult situations. When somebody is has a deadline, there's a big meeting coming up, and they run into a technical problem, that can be a very, very stressful situation. You should not be defensive. You should be the one helping them. You should not be the one having to be on the defense and having to push back against somebody's concerns. They're really just trying to express to you how important it is to solve this particular problem. You should be partnering with them. If anything, you should be empathizing with them and telling them, you're absolutely right. This is a horrible problem. I know we can fix this for you. You should never contradict anybody. If they really feel that this is a problem, if they really feel that what they're seeing is an issue, you should not be a situation where you're telling them how they feel. You should be instead understanding more about what they're seeing and then trying to figure out where the problem is based on what they are seeing. You want to be able to, especially in these difficult situations where somebody is really having a frustrating time of things, that is your cue 
to sit back and listen. Let them talk and tell you about what they're seeing, what they're finding, how important it is to them, what's on the line for your organization. And that should give you some insight into how important it is to resolve this. Not only does that help you solve the technical issue, it also builds the relationship. And when this person has a very bad problem again, they know who to come to to help solve that particular problem. Even if there is not an update, while you're working on a very stressful situation, a very difficult situation, if hours have gone by and you still haven't gotten an update, you should always circle back with the original person and just let them know that you haven't heard back yet or you haven't gotten an update. And here's the next thing that you're going to do. Sometimes not saying that there's anything new is just as important as saying, here is what's new. The, uh, the key here is just to be able to communicate and make sure everybody knows what's going on all the time. I am not here to judge. I'm here just to solve your problems, to help you with these situations and figure out what's going on, especially when there are situations where there is cultural sensitivity. We work in environments these days where there are a lot of people from a lot of different races, a lot of different religions, a lot of different backgrounds doesn't matter to me. I'm working with computers. I'm trying to solve problems. I need to be very sensitive when I walk into somebody's cube and they have a culture or a background that's very different than mine. I don't necessarily want to bring up these things that I'm seeing on the wall and how unusual they are to me because that is their culture. That's something that's very usual to them. You don't want to be implying any type of offense towards that. If there are situations where somebody's being insulting to you, and this does happen, unfortunately, from time to time, you can let them go with that. You should leave your insults on the playground, out there, on the outside. It's not something you bring into the business place. And by, by slinging back insults to somebody, you're simply coming down to their level. You're a better person than that. You're a much bigger person than that. Don't be pulled down to those types of things. You, indeed, are, are the teacher. You're the one who's really resolving the issue. You should be the one coordinating this whole process. And when you put yourself into that position, it simply elevates what you're doing. You're not the warden here. You're not in charge of a bunch of guys in prison. You're the one who's in charge of solving this particular technical problem. Your job is to make people smarter. Your job is to make sure that at the end of having to go through this, that everybody now knows next time this happens, here's a fantastic way we can all solve this particular issue. You are probably, by the way, in the midst of doing these troubleshooting processes, going to make some mistakes, whether they are mistakes of judgment, whether they are technical problems, really doesn't matter. We want to learn from those. We want to be sure that we internalize and after all of this is over, be able to look back at what went on and try to find ways we could make this better next time. Even if you end up making mistakes along the way, those are always opportunities to learn more about how you can do it differently next time. 